No time wasted. Let's go. Symptoms of the fear of criticism. This fear is almost as universal as the fear of poverty. And its effects are just as fatal to personal achievement. Mainly because the fear destroys initiative and discourages the use of imagination. The major symptoms of the fear are self-consciousness, generally expressed through nervousness, timidity, in conversation, and in meeting strangers. Awkward movement of the hands and limbs. Shifting of the eyes. Lack of poise. Expressed through lack of voice. Control. Nervousness in the presence of others. Poor posture of body. Poor memory. Personality. Lacking in firmness of decision. Personal charm and ability to express opinions. Definitely. The habit of sidestepping issues instead of meeting them squarely. Agreeing with others without carefully examination of their opinions. Inferiority complex. The habit of expressing self-approval by word of mouth and by actions as a means of covering up a feeling of inferiority, using big words to impress others, often without knowing the real meaning of the words, imitating others in dress, speech, and manners, boasting of imaginary achievements. This sometimes gives a surface appearance of a feeling of superiority. Extravagance. The habit of trying to keep up with the Joneses, spending beyond one's income, Lack of initiative, failure to embrace opportunities for self-advancement, fear to express opinions, lack of confidence in one's own ideas, giving evasive answers to questions asked by superiors, hesitancy of manner and speech, deceit in both words and deeds, lack of ambition, mental and physical laziness, lack of self-assertion, Slowness in reaching decisions. Easily influenced by others. The habit of criticizing others behind their backs and flattering them to their faces. The habit of accepting defeat without protest. Quitting and undertaking when opposed by others. Suspicious of other people without cause. Lacking in tactfulness of manner and speech. Unwillingness to accept the blame for mistakes. The fear of ill health. This, may fear, this fear may be traced to both physical and social heredity. It is closely associated as to its origin with the causes of fear of old age and the fear of death because it leads one closely to the border of terrible worlds of which man knows not, but concerning which he has been taught some discomforting stories. The opinion is somewhat general. Also, that certain unethical people engaged in the business of selling health have had not a little to do with keeping alive the fear of ill health. In the main, man fears ill health because of the terrible pictures which have been planted in his mind of what may happen if death should overtake him. He also fears it because of the economic toll which he may claim. A reputable physician estimated that 75% of all people who visit physicians for professional service are suffering with hypochondria, imaginary illness. It has been shown most convincingly that the fear of disease, even where there is not the slightest cause for fear, often produces the physical symptoms of the diseased fear. Powerful and mighty is the human mind. It builds or it destroys. Playing upon this common weakness of fear or ill health, dispensers of patent medicines have reaped fortune. This form of imposition upon credulous humanity became so prevalent some 20 years ago that Coiler's Weekly Magazine conducted a bitter campaign against some of the worst offenders in the patent medicine business. 
During the flu epidemic, which broke out during the World War, the mayor of New York City took drastic steps to check the damage which people were doing themselves through their inherent fear of ill health. He called in newspaper men and said to them, gentlemen, I feel it is necessary to ask you not to publish any scare headlines concerning the flu epidemic. Unless you cooperate with me, we will have a situation which we cannot control. The newspapers quit publishing stories about the flu, and within one month, the epidemic had been successfully checked. Wow. Through a series of experiments conducted some years ago, it was proved that people may be made ill by suggestion. We conducted this experiment by causing three acquaintances to visit the victims, each of whom asked the question, what ails you? You look terribly ill. The first questioner usually provoked a grin and a nonchalant. Oh, nothing. I'm all right. From the victim. The second questioner usually was answered with the statement, I don't know exactly, but I do feel badly. The third questioner was usually met with the frank admission that the victim was actually feeling ill. Try this on an acquaintance if you doubt that it will make him uncomfortable. But do not carry the experiment too far. There is a certain religious sect whose members take vengeance upon their enemies by the hexing method. They call it placing a spell on the victim. There is overwhelming evidence that disease sometimes begins in the form of negative thought impulse. Let me read that again. There is overwhelming evidence that disease sometimes begins in the form of negative thought impulse. Such an impulse may be passed from one mind to another by suggestion or created by an individual in his own mind. A man who was blessed with more wisdom than this incident might indicate once said, when anyone asks me how I feel, I always want to answer by knocking him down. Doctors sent patients into new climates for their health because a change of mental attitude is necessary. The seed of fear or of ill health lives in every human mind. Worry, fear, discouragement, disappointment, and love, and business affairs. Because this seed to germinate and grow. Cause this seed to germinate and grow. The recent business depression kept the doctors in the run. Because every form of negative thinking may cause ill health. Disappointments in business and in love stand at the head of the list of causes of fear of ill health. A young man suffered a disappointment in love which sent him to a hospital. For months he hovered between life and death. A specialist in suggestive therapeutics was called in. The specialist changed nurses, placing him in the charge of a very charming young woman who began by prearrangement with the doctor to make love to him the first day of her arrival on the job. Within three weeks, the patient was discharged from the hospital, still suffering, but with an entirely different malady. He was in love again. The remedy was a hoax, but the patient and the nurse were later married. Both are in good health at the time of this writing. Symptoms of the fear of ill health. The symptoms of this almost universal fear are auto-suggestion, the habit of negative use of self-suggestion by looking for and expecting to find the symptoms of all kinds of disease, enjoying imaginary illness and speaking of it as being real, the habit of trying all fads and isms recommended by others as having therapeutic value, talking to others of operations, accidents, and other forms of illness, experimenting with diets, physical exercises, reducing symptoms without professional guidance, trying home remedies, patent medicines, and quack remedies. Hypochondria, the habit of taking of illness, concentrating the mind upon disease and expecting its appearance until a nervous break occurs. Nothing that comes in bottles can cure this condition. It is brought on by negative thinking and nothing but positive can, thought can affect the cure. Hypochondria, a medical term for imaginary disease, is said to do as much damage on occasion as the disease one fears might do. Most so-called cases of nerves come from imaginary illness. Exercise. Fear of ill health often interferes with proper physical exercise and results in overweight by causing one to avoid outdoor life. Susceptibility. Fear of ill health breaks down nature's body resistance and creates a favorable condition for any form of disease one may contact. The fear of ill health often is related to the fear of poverty, especially in the case of the hypochondriac, who constantly worries about the possibility of having to pay a doctor's bill, hospital bill, etc. 
This type of person spends much time preparing for sickness, talking about death, saving money for cemetery lots and burial expenses, etc. Self-coddling. The habit of making a bid for often resort to this trick to avoid work. The habit of feigning illness to cover plain laziness or to serve as an alibi for lack of ambition. Intemperance. The habit of using alcohol or narcotics to destroy pain such as headaches, neuralgia, etc. Instead of eliminating the cause, the habit of reading about illness and worrying over the possibility of being stricken by it. The habit of reading patent medicine advertisements. The fear of loss of love. The original source of this inherent fear needs but little description because it obviously grew out of man's polygamous habit of stealing his fellow man's mate and his habit of taking liberties with her whenever he could. Jealousy and other similar forms of dementia, precocs grow out of man's inherited fear of the loss of love of someone. This fear is the most painful of all the six basic fears. It probably plays more havoc with the body and mind than any of the other basic fears, as if it often leads to permanent insanity. The fear of the loss of love probably dates back to the Stone Age, when men stole women by brute force. They continue to steal females, but their technique has changed. Instead of force, they now use persuasion, the promise of pretty clothes, motor cars, and other bait much more effective than physical force. Man's habits are the same as they were at the dawn of civilization, but he expresses them differently. Careful analysis has shown that women are more susceptible to this fear than men. This fact is easily explained. Women have learned from experience that men are polygamous by nature, that they are not to be trusted in the hands of rivals. Symptoms of the fear of loss of love. The distinguishing symptoms of the fear are Jealousy, damn, I'm over the time, over 10 minutes, but I feel like uh, we're going to leave that one there, man, for tomorrow, man. We're going to leave that there, man. We're just going to finish the book out strong, and you already know, man, read, remember, repeat. Bitch, fuck is up. Promise you I'm about to fuck it up. We moving too fast, buckle up. Corporate guys, few jugglers. Smell of gas through the muffler. Four times, I'ma double up. Hennessy in the double cup. Told dice that I'm cuffing up. New swag like the governor. Drop the bag.